Our first speaker is a man many of you know as the man on the bridge. He is the president of the Real Idaho 3%, nationally affiliated, and is here to read the proclamation from the office of the governor and talk to us about Liberty and Patriot Day. Big Idaho round of applause for Eric Parker, everyone. Everybody hear me? Yeah. The Office of the Governor Proclamation. Whereas on April 19, 1775, British troops marched on Lexington and Concord, Massachusetts, in an effort to confiscate munitions stored for the local militia. And whereas about 5 a.m., between 600 and 800 British troops encountered 75 American Patriots at Lexington Green, where Captain Parker ordered, stand your ground, don't fire unless fired upon, but if they mean to have a war, let it start here. Whereas the event of April 19, 1775 ignited a passion in the colonial Patriots that grew into the American Revolution, the founding of this great nation. And the freedoms our citizens enjoy today. Mm -hmm. And whereas Patriots Day is an opportunity to focus on the historic nature of the American Revolution and the sacrifice that men and women endured over the course of that eight year struggle for independence. Now, therefore, C.L. Butch Otter, Governor of the State of Idaho, do hereby proclaim April 19th to be Patriots Day. Thanks everybody for coming out. This is uh, very important to me, and uh, I know it's important to you guys too. I can tell because you're here. 242 years ago, good men mustered. I think about the uncertainty they must have felt looking around at each other, not knowing what was going to happen. The biggest, strongest military in the known world was on its way to confiscate their means of self-defense. They were ranchers, farmers, shopkeeps, blacksmiths, cobblers, every walk of life represented. Laborer and well-to-do stood together. They were the militia. They were the community's first responders. And there is no way they could have known what they were about to start. They did, however, know that the might of the British Army was marching to Lexington and Concord to confiscate weapons and arrest Samuel Adams and John Hancock, the two leaders of an underground resistance group from Boston. They called themselves the Sons of Liberty. The militia knew that they had to hold them off, that they had to slow them down, while Hancock and Adams and the others moved the weapons cache. If they did not accomplish this mission, the resistance would be left with nothing, no leaders and no means of resistance. It was crucial and they knew it. 500 men had mustered, though by the end of the day, it would be over 4,000. And let that point be a lesson to any would-be tyrant that thinks they will steamroll over a small group of patriots. All you will accomplish with naked aggression is to make martyrs. The trumpets will sound, the flags will fly, and the muskets will come down off the wall. The myth is that these men were amateurs. That couldn't be further from the truth. 
These were well-drilled, experienced combat veterans who in around 1774 had gone from traditional militia to something new. The Minutemen, unlike the militia that met usually once or twice a year, this newly formed branch was expected to be prepared at a moment's notice to meet on the common with 40 rounds, powder, and rations to self-sustain for a week if need be. They were trained two to three times a week by experienced combat vets. They had intelligence gatherers who would go into Boston to take notes on where, when, and how the British were preparing. They had writers like Paul Revere ready to spread the word. In short, seeing the writing on the wall, they had organized to defend. On the morning of April 19th, it all paid off. Their spies reported and their warning system went active. Around sunup, Captain John Parker stood with 76 other men in Lexington. He was 46 years old. He was a veteran of the French and Indian War. Most importantly, he was a member of Rogers Rangers. John did not want a war. He told his men, Stand your ground. Do not fire unless fired upon. But if they mean to have a war, let it start here. The British did come, and they did mean to have a war. John and his 76 stood in the gap against 700. We gather here today in remembrance of them. Reuben Brown was dispatched from Concord to Lexington to gather information. Not long after sunrise, he returned to the waiting Minutemen that the regulars had fired on the men of Lexington. The men looked to their officers filled with rage. They went out to meet the enemy. The regulars had begun the search for the weapons. The Minutemen attacked. The British began to retreat. The word was spreading of the 77 men of Lexington. Minutemen from surrounding towns were rushing to Concord. They followed the British all the way back to Boston, flanking and ambushing them the entire time. They shut down the roads into Boston, and this began the siege of Boston and the American, or should I say our, revolution. So here we are, 240 years, some 200 and something 40 years later. We see the similarities from our history, and we can read the writing on the wall. President John F. Kennedy told us the truth. He told us that there is a, a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primary, primarily on covenant means for expanding its sphere of influence on infiltration rather than invasion, on subversion rather than elections, on intimidation rather than free choice. He then told us, today, right now, we need a nation of Minutemen, <coughs> citizens who are not only prepared to take up arms, but citizens who regard the preservation of freedom as the basic purpose of their daily life and who are willing to consciously work and sacrifice for that freedom. My name is Eric Parker. I'm the founder of the Real Three Percenters of Idaho. Amen. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Oh. Thank you. I founded this organization when I got home after 19 months of being detained in two federal trials. But I became a Three Percenter four years ago on a warm April day in Nevada. We watched for a week leading up to the 12th <coughs> as, a, as, a, as a large armed group moved in on a family. They were militarized, they had snipers, they had attack dogs. And we watched from all over the world, not just me, 
But some people got in their trucks and said, you know, enough is enough. And they went there to see what was happening for themselves. And when we got there, we found it was all true. That this bureaucracy had brought an army against the family. And we can't help but look back at that and see the similarities, the un injustice. And well, we're, uh, we're not going to uh, stand for it. And that day, we had a decision to make as they pointed sniper rifle rifles at unarmed civilians in the wash, and they threatened to fire if they didn't disperse. We had the same, the same thoughts I imagine they had back then. And we had a choice to make. We made our choices, and we stood in the gap. Lord willing, we made it through. Nobody was hurt that day. But we do see the similarities. And I'm here to tell you it can happen again. And that's what we focus on at the Idaho 3%, along with a lot of other things. But we'll be prepared. We'll be ready to stand in the gap. strive to be those Minutemen President Kennedy asked for. We cherish our heritage. Our heritage is those first Minutemen who in 1775 stood in the gap. In everything we do, we remember their honor and honor their sacrifice. We live by their words. Do not fire unless fired upon. We fly our flags as they did. I'd like to share with you the significance of the Gadsden flag. The rattlesnake poised. They chose the rattlesnake for two reasons. One, it's only found on this continent, just like us, the American patriots. Two, it gives a warning. It gives a warning before it attacks. But once it ta attacks, it's lightning fast and deadly, just like we need to be. That's why they chose that, that rattlesnake on that flag. In closing, I'd like to remind you all, 11,000 patriots died in prison ships in the Boston Harbor during our revolution. They would have been freed if they would have only denounced the Declaration of Independence, swore allegiance to the King, and joined the British Navy. Each one of those men would not comply. They died, 11,000 of them. Remember that because we do. Thanks for coming. Thank you for your